Welcome to Kit Guru, Christina here, and today we are looking at XPG as a company and what they have to offer in terms of gaming peripherals. With this overview review today, we delve into the Primer mouse coming in at 4165 and the ADATA Precog gaming headset, currently retailing at 99.47, all from, you've guessed it, XPG. But before we move on, let me ask you a question. Has KitGuru helped you make a buying decision? Let us know down in the comments and whilst you're there, ring that bell, hit the sub button so we can continue doing what we do best and that's delivering unbiased tech reviews just for you. Right, okay, so enough chatting, let's look at the goods. The packaging is much better on the headset than the mouse, to be honest, and with the price difference, you may expect this. I'm enjoying this hard case, but it is on the large side, but at least it would keep your headset safe and keep all the bits together. Inside the precog case, there is manuals and stickers, the detachable microphone, and about 100 leads. Okay, I'm joking, but <laughs> there is a lot. We have the USB-C to USB-C cable with the DSP sound card attached, the USB-C to USB converter cable, the 3.5mm to 3.5mm cable with controller as well as a Y splitter cable. Wow, okay, so that's a wide range of ways to use this headset. And in the mouse box, we have the mouse itself, the manual, the stickers, and not a lot else really. With a mid-range price here, that isn't too bad, I guess. Can't judge a book by its cover. And talking about being judgmental, let's take a closer look at the aesthetics of these devices. The ergonomics of the primer mouse show that it is intended for right-handed use with the body sloping down towards the right, which supports the hand nicely for a comfortable fit. The mouse looks great with this stipple effect matte plastic and a shiny engraved design along the sides. I did find some scuffs out of the box, obviously that's a little bit disappointing. It also looks great with all the RGB running along the sides and through the word primer as well as through the scroll wheel. The RGB is nice and bright in the daylight as well as nighttime. Underneath is bright red which reminds me of those little Louboutin shoes, if they were made of plastic of course, and it is black on top and red underneath as stated. There also is four glide pads here of decent size. The cable is also a nice weave, really tight and smooth. And moving on to the headset, the headset looks like the old cup headphones you used to get at school with the dual wires above the adjustment band and the metal detailing on the brackets and couplers. They've also put the same effort into the ends of the USB-C cable that has the same type of metal. The pleather looks nice, adds a another texture into the mix, which is always good to see. They've carried through that red theme that we saw in the mouse through their stitching in this headset. There is also, again, attention to detail as there is a nice little design inside each cup and embossed plastic design on the outer cup. The XPG Precog has red LEDs on the ear cups when it is connected to USB power. If you find the lights distracting though, then this function can be switched off using the USB controller box. I also like the engraved L and R on the metal brackets. So let's talk about feel. Starting with the headset, it really feels great. The metal details add another level of rigidity and premium feel. The pleather is nice and thick and the ear cups feel really nice and soft with that memory foam cushioning. However, they really aren't that thick. When you press them down, you can feel the underneath headphone quite easily. I would have liked to seen them be a tiny bit bigger, but that's just my preference. When you put the headset on, it feels like the cups cutouts are a little too big and that they are letting a lot of air in which doesn't create a seal very well. This could lead to outside sound getting in or inside sound getting out and being lost but we'll look at that later on when we do the sound test. However, the rest of the headset is really comfortable. The head strap is really supportive. There is no digging in, no pressure on the head or temples, and the memory foam ear cups are super soft, and I cannot feel the underneath structure, which I was concerned about and expecting because of those thinner ear pads there. Even after a few hours use, they still didn't give me any kind of pressure or headaches, and the weight of the device is really quite light. It doesn't seem to hang heavy at all, and you can easily forget you're even wearing it. Now, the feel of the 
the mouse it's really plasticky and to be honest it does feel a little cheap there are a lot of rough edges and it feels a little clunky in the hand it's not exactly light at around 98 grams which can make it a bit more of an effort to move around especially on lower dpi settings the buttons okay so the buttons on the primer include the usual left and right click up and down buttons dpi button and scroll wheel there is also an rgb button with variations such as static color wave and breathing the left and right mouse clicks have a loud click with a slightly higher resistance than say the razor basilisk which i use on a daily basis and there is a very very subtle post travel the side buttons almost sound hollow and feel a little spongy compared to the left and right click and have quite a significant amount of pre and post travel the mouse wheel also has very little resistance and it is really easy to overshoot that scroll there Switches are Omron mechanical switches that have 20 million click lifespan, so not bad, not bad. <laughs> In terms of the shape of the body, it works well with all those grip styles and there is an adequate amount of support for the whole hand. The central mid-height hump is most likely the reason for this as it molds completely to your hand and really adds to that comfort level. There is no pinky or thumb drag. The material of the body is double shot PBT surface, so this is really good. And this can supposedly survive up to 150 Celsius, but who is gonna need that really? <laughs> and it's resistant are solvents very strong and does not shine as fast the material feels a little bit like fine grip tape it's pretty rough and I can't tell if I like it or not it is great for grip obviously but it's not that pleasing in terms of the tactile experience in my opinion and it is just my opinion I'm not dead keen on it but you may love it it also is pretty grease resistant which is great In terms of build quality, well, I was quite pleasantly surprised. There are some rough edges, of course, like I mentioned, and it does feel a bit plasticky, but there is no flex or rattle at all. So I'll leave it up to you to decide whether that's good enough. Okay, so I know I normally talk about software, but let's get this out of the way early. There is no current software available for the primer mouse or precog headset and it's not going to be here probably until next year according to the xpg representative so we'll have to wait for that to see how it works and what you can achieve with it this headset has an electrostatic reducer and it has two drivers per cup a classic 40 millimeter dynamic neodymium transducer for base located at the bottom side of the ear pavilion the electrostatic driver which i mentioned earlier xpg claims can help deliver a cleaner treble this is a rarity but but doesn't always mean better than having single drivers. We'll check that out and carry on in the testing. I am going to be using the USB-C cable that also has the DSP sound card attached that is compatible with all major gaming consoles and many major gaming mobile phones. This product is one of the few to have chosen a USB Type-C as a main connectivity choice with a hardware implemented DSP. For those platforms where a software solution is not easily available, this could be quite good. I'll also attach the USB converter as I can use it with my PC to play games with. On this controller we have a volume wheel and if you click it you can turn the mic on and off which is indicated by the small LED here. I will use the FPS setting on the controller for Call of Duty. I will play around with the 7.1 as well obviously it is a digital 7.1 and I will use the music setting and listen to some music with that. You have a LED on and off switch on one side and ENC on and off switch on the other. The LED on and off switch is actually for the headset themselves. This controller box gets pretty warm by the way in the first say 10 minutes of using. Luckily it didn't get much hotter over a longer period of time though but 
I don't know, that's kind of concerning to me that it got hot quite quickly. I will change to the 3.5 millimeter to listen to music and see if I can tell the difference with that high res audio. There is something a little unusual about this headset though, and I did mention it very briefly just to tease you there. It is the high res audio certified section, but only when using the 3.5 millimeter jack. So that probably tells you everything you need to know about the sound card. But here are my experience with the other modes on the DSP sound card. This is starting off with the FPS mode. I found personally that this mode is most definitely accentuating the high end frequencies, which is great for footsteps and the clicks of reloads, etc. But it did make the explosion sound a little empty and almost unrealistic. The FPS mode is almost completely devoid of bass and even a lot of the mids too, so that's a little disappointing. I thought I'd have a fiddle with that 7.1 surround sound mode. The overall mix is a lot better with the bass being a little bit punchier, the mids filling in the space and still keeping the details of the high. The music mode, if you intend to listen to music, this turns off the DSP processing while connecting to type C. And this selection is supposedly to deliver a standard unprocessed audio signal and it is a big difference from the other sound profiles. It sounds much cleaner. The sound profile is bassier, but I found when switching to the 3.5 millimeter, you can really tell the difference. To sum up, the sound card is disappointing. It kind of just adds uh, like EQ filters to the sound coming through and it's no match at all for that straight 3.5 millimeter connection. The USB-C on music mode is really close though. The one downside for me, I couldn't really find the right sound for gaming. I also think that for the money, this is also a little too expensive for what you get. When you compare it to say the Coolmaster MH670, the level of quality spec and audio is definitely superior overall to the precog and if you haven't checked out that review yet make sure you do so here on kit guru the controller on the 3.5 is hundred percent better than that on the USB-C to USB-C cable it is accurate it doesn't get hot it's smaller therefore lighter and nicer to wear and also I did find that on the USB-C to USB-C cable and that DSP sound box, it was really inaccurate. It was kind of jumping all over the place. And when you scrolled it, it was kind of missing sections. It was jumping more than two increments at a time. Um, it was just really annoying. I did order another cable to see if it was just generally a, a dud one, but it did happen again. Now I did try the ENC as well, but first a little bit about that. There are two microphones on the XPG precog, one to capture your voice and the other captures your surrounding sound. The idea is that when the ENC is turned on, your surround sound is strongly reduced to help to deliver sort of clearer sound to your teammates and streaming listeners, for instance. It is also made for competitive gaming, so noisy esports arenas, busy internet gaming cafes, and also obviously at home, it can help drown out the noises going on around you. This feature can be used only when connected via USB and can be toggled on and off via the side buttons on the USB remote controller. With ENC on or off, I couldn't really hear much of a difference, to be honest. On to the mic test for the headphones then. So the first mic test is with the USB-C to USB-C cable and has the DSP sound card attached. So this is the mic test for the microphone here, which is the precog headset by XPG. This is me sort of moving my hands about, tapping around in the background. Here's me doing a little bit of typing. Here's me speaking whilst doing a little bit of typing. There's nothing going on majorly in the background right now, but this is kind of the normal ambient noise. This is me kind of talking a little bit as if I was excited, something really exciting is happening, or maybe I'm really frustrated at Call of Duty, which happens quite often. This is then me talking very quietly. If I'm about to make a move on Call of Duty and I feel like I'm actually in the game, I might start talking like this. So that's the kind of conclusion there of the mic test. I will add some peas and B 
B's and S, 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 so that you can hear some of those. And hopefully the pop shield on this microphone will radicate lots of the P and B out of the sound there. So there you go. It's pretty good to be honest. I am impressed. It has a really nice sound and my voice isn't heightened or muffled at all. There isn't any distortion or any signal interference. There isn't even really ambient noise. You can hear me tapping around, but due to it being a condenser mic, this is expected to happen. The bit that I like the most is that the mic doesn't really clip, which is huge, and it handles the changes in volume levels amazingly. So without the USB-C to USB-C cable, and obviously that means removing that DSP sound card as well, this is the mic test without the USB-C to USB-C cable, just using the 3.5 millimeter cable with the uh, sound, you know, the sound controls and stuff on it there. So this is what it sounds like. This is me talking relatively normally and obviously it's not going to change the background noise but I'll give you a bit of background noise just so you can hear. A bit of typing, that kind of thing. And I'll give you a little bit of the loud speaking, a little bit of the quiet speaking, the p p p p p p p p and it's s s s You can hear a lot more of the ambient noise in the room and there is a crispier sound to my voice. The highs really are prominent. There is a slight amount of distortion, but nothing major. I would say though that with the DSP sound card, it sounds so much better and really makes a huge difference. What do you think? Let us know down in the comments. Let's move on to testing in regards to the primer mouse since we've been speaking about the headset for so long. There was no trouble at all here with the PMW3360 optical sensor and the fact that it has 12,000 DPI as well as the 50G acceleration and 250 IPS max speed, it was responsive and easy to use. I noticed whilst using the mouse that there was no jitter or any unwanted acceleration and that is really a plus. I could find exactly the right fit for my playstyle. so big thumbs up from me. Okay, so we've gone over quite a lot today as this has been quite a big overview of two totally different items here. So we're going to go through pros and cons. So we'll start with the pros for the mouse. So the pros for me, that it had a nice braid on the cable. It looks great with those bright RGB. The buttons are really clicky. Obviously, I know the side buttons weren't as clicky, but they're good. Good for all grip types, really. It doesn't attract grease. Comfortable and easy to use. The specs are not bad for the price either. So cons wise, the mouse feels plasticky, rough edges. It's not exactly light. The mouse wheel has very little resistance and nothing really stands out as, you know, amazing. It's just a standard kind of mouse. <laughs> Pros for the headset, lots of cable choice, nice hard case, lots of spec for the price and a nice visual tactile textures there all over the headset. The headset lights up, it is only red LEDs but still it lights up. 3.5 millimeter sound was epic when listening to music and worth the price tag with that high res certification. The mic is really quite good quality as well especially when you're using the DSP sound card. So let's go over some cons. No lights when using the 3.5 millimeter cable and the cups are not really that thick. They were comfortable, but I would have liked to have seen a bit thicker in terms of cushion in there. The fit wasn't great around my ears in terms of the cups and it did let in a little bit of air. The DSP sound card was disappointing as it gets really warm with use and also the controller on the DSP controller is really temperamental. At first I feel that the precog is more headphones with a headset after full. It was designed to be accommodating to esports players and all the different platforms that they play on as well as tech enthusiasts and even audiophiles. I think this headset has fallen a little bit short of my expectations. The sound profile is great for music, especially when using the 3.5 millimeter cable and the mic is good quality when you use the DSP sound card, but it doesn't blow me away as such. I also struggled to really get what I wanted from the headset 
headset in terms of gaming, especially on FPS. Being able to hear the details as well as enjoy the immersive larger sounds such as explosions is not an easy feat to conquer, I get that. But I feel for the price, the headset is, it just really doesn't hit the mark for me personally. Now, conclusion for the primer mouse, well, it's what I would call average. It will do the job and it does have a good sensor, but it does have some rough edges and feels a little bit plasticky and for the price it's really nothing special but it's not terrible either it doesn't stand out from the competition so what do you guys think of xpg as a company do you think that you'll be buying these particular items we've spoken about today or something else or do you already own something by xpg let us know down in the comments and whilst you're there make sure you sub ring that bell check out our merchandise my name's christina this is kit guru and i'll see you in the next one